Hi everyone, my name is Julie and today I want to ask you a very simple question. What is the oldest language in the world? As you might have guessed, this is not simple at all. Before filming this video, I asked you, the audience, to vote on this question and most of you chose Sumer, some chose Sanskrit and others thought that the oldest language was not on the list. But before answering this very popular question, let me ask you back, what do you mean when you say the oldest language? Here there can be several interpretations. Is it the first language ever spoken? This would be the first language of the humanity and also the language that we know nothing about. You see, languages change and evolve, this is just what they do. Some languages change faster, some slower, but this change can even be observed in one human lifetime. How often do the grandparents not understand what their grandchildren say? A language evolves by spreading on a territory, then settling and accumulating different types of change in different locations, until progressively this one language becomes two dialects, then two separate languages, then these languages split into more languages, becoming language families. And this process is stretched in thousands of years. The oldest language in the world is certainly the first language ever spoken, and it could be 50,000 years old or 100,000 years old, we don't know. But because it was such a long time ago, for sure none of the modern languages resemble even closely to what it was. But what if we try to find a language like this? What if by the question what is the oldest language in the world, you actually mean what is the oldest living language? Here again we need to precise. The oldest living language means the language that has changed the least in comparison to the first language of the humanity. So in other words, it is the most archaic language. Finding the most archaic language in a language family, for instance, is actually a doable thing. That was done, for example, for the Indo-European language family, where the Proto-Indo-European was reconstructed. Then they compared the features of this Proto-Indo-European to the features of the modern living Indo-European languages to find which of these languages concerns most of the archaic features. And the winner is the Baltic branch and, more specifically, Lithuanian language. But not so fast. Who says that the reconstruction of Proto-Indo-European is actually correct? What if we find another language that would change our perception of it? Like what happened when we found Hittite in Anatolia? What about Sanskrit? It is an ancient language, so it conserved many archaic features of the Proto-Indo-European and it is still used for ritual purposes. But can we consider it fully as a living language? So you see, we're talking only about Indo-European language family and already there's a lot of questions and controversy. However, there could be some hope. We know that humans originated in Africa and most certainly so did the first language of the humanity. So maybe we should look in Africa in an attempt to find our holy grail. Maybe, maybe not. What we certainly can find in Africa is an enormous diversity of enormously under-researched languages. But we still could build theories, couldn't we? These are the Khoisan people. They speak the Khoisan languages. Maybe you've heard of them. These are the languages that use a great amount of different click sound, resulting in something like... Their languages are so different from anything else on the planet that maybe these were the first ones to split from the mother of all languages. And the genetics kind of confirms it, as these people genetically are more different from everybody else than the rest of the people among themselves. That means that maybe all our languages use clicking sounds, but then most of them lost it and only few remaining hunter-gatherer communities in Africa conserve this archaic feature. But again, how can we say that clicking sounds are actually an archaic feature? As a matter of fact, we can't. The Khoisan languages could have actually split from the main branch and developed the clicking sounds all by themselves. Actually, they could have changed so much that they might resemble the first language much less than some other living languages. And by the way, who ever proved that the Khoisan actually were part of just one language family? Questions, questions. What it shows is that without restoring the first language of the humanity, 
We just can't say which of the living languages resembles the most of it. And as the practice shows, even if we someday somehow manage to restore it, we are not sure at all to agree on which of the modern languages or even dead languages that we know of resembles it the most. So that's it. No hope. There is no way to answer the question about the oldest language in the world without getting lost in guessing, misinformation and ideology. Well, looking at the answers of the poll that you guys answered to, I can see that a lot of people, when asked this question, understand it as what is the oldest written language in the world? And to that, there might be an answer. The first writing system that we know of originates in Mesopotamia. And the first language that used this system was the Sumer language. And the first text in this language that have been found so far date from the 4th millennium BC. Which means that Sumer is the first written language until and if we find another older one. But there is one problem with the Sumer language. It is dead. But it would be nice to know what is the oldest written language that is still alive, wouldn't it? There are several languages that had an extremely long written tradition, for instance, Greek, Chinese or Tamil. The linear B used for inscribing Mycenaean Greek dates from the 2nd millennium BC and the beginnings of the modern Greek alphabet date from 8th century BC. Some forms of Chinese characters were used since around 1200 BC, but more recognizable for today's Chinese speakers' characters were already in use around 2nd century BC. The oldest Tamil writings date from around 500 BC and the texts of around 1st century BC are studied by Tamil students at school. But in all of these cases, in order to comprehend these old texts, the reader has to be specifically trained and educated to do so. And if two people from different times met, for example, an ancient Chinese and a modern Chinese, they wouldn't be able to understand and talk to each other because the sound system changed so much that it's even difficult to say if both of these people still speak the same language. In the case with Latin, for example, the name of the language has changed. We say that Latin is dead, but the modern Roman language speakers could possibly understand the same amount of Latin text as Tamil speakers would understand from ancient Tamil text. So why are we calling Latin a dead language then? And if we're not concentrating on writing only, and why should we, because most of the languages are oral only, we can remember Sanskrit, which has its hymns that date from 2nd millennium BC. And how about Coptic, which is the direct descendant of ancient Egyptian and thus is traceable to 4000 BC, even though the language is now, as Sanskrit, only used for religious purposes. But again, saying that the ancient and the new version of a language are still the same language is a very debatable thing and it all comes to what your beliefs and conventions are. And personally, I don't even think it's possible to compare living languages in terms of which one is the older because languages don't have a birth certificate or something. Yes, we can date old descriptions, we can find mentions of the language in the old texts, but again, if ancient and modern Greek are both named Greek, it is not because these two languages are more similar to each other than, for example, Latin and Italian are. Naming languages is often just a very political thing, and that of course does not represent the real state of affairs. But well, all of that is subject to debate, and I invite you to do so in the comment section, as of course it is very interesting, speculative and sometimes controversial topic. Hit subscribe for more language videos and big thank you to my patrons for supporting this channel. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you next time. Bye bye!